All right, everybody, today we're going to take a look at the diminished chord and specifically the diminished chord that we find in body and soul. There are a couple of diminished chords in that tune, but they function the same way. So we're going to take a look at that because this showed up in, a, or this came up in a Skype lesson or a Zoom lesson I did the other day, and I thought this is a good idea for a lesson. So let's get right into it. <laughs> So the progression is kind of like D minor, G7, E minor, E flat diminished. You probably see this all the time, right? D minor, so two, five. could also be a like a C major over E. So some real books maybe say E uh, D sharp diminished, but I prefer to think of it as an E flat diminished because we're going down. So E minor or C over E, E flat, D. So a lot of times the diminished chord function as some kind of dominant, right? But in this case, it's a more of a passing chord. So it's not clear how we should treat it. What are the scale we should pose to use there? So we'll take a look at that. So one way to figure out what scale to play over a certain chord is to take the, take the chord tones, E flat, F sharp, A, C. I know some people are saying it's a, it's a G flat, and, but I've, for me, it's easier to think E flat, F sharp, A, C. It's really confusing with diminished chords, so you want to make it easy for yourself. And then just fill in the blanks. So notes between those notes from the key we're in. We're in C major, so if I do that, I end up with this scale. to give that scale a name for like I don't even know where to begin so how do you derive that scale my improv teacher in college was Pat LaBarbera and he likes to think of that scale as a B alter with an added added F sharp or an added natural fifth play scales over uh, those chords let's uh, make a little backing track here so D minor G7 E minor E flat diminished E Gloria G mixo E frigid
Nights. scale with the diminished scale the half whole which would be the the first choice most people would pick I guess there's just one note difference the G oh sorry that's half whole G sharp so there's one note different and uh, you might say well what what's the difference but it's uh, it's in the details right that's where you find the the good stuff so you want to be aware of those little nuances all right so I'll do the same thing but this time I'll play a uh, diminished <laughs> sounds better and that's fine if you think it sounds better it's uh, good one thing to remember if you're having a hard time with the, the, the diminished scale remember that it's an E flat minor it's a tetra chord with four notes right for those are E flat minor and then you can think A minor it's easier for uh, for to hear the scale that way too it, it becomes easy to hear it right there and with the diminished scale there's all this crazy stuff you can do right pattern stuff I have a few lessons on diminished stuff so I'll link to those there's one more scale that we can consider and if we go back to the first one we talked about which was B altered with a regular fifth starting on E flat if you remove the F from the equation you get this scale with the flat six starting on E flat so let's try that one too scales are I think are valid and worth taking a look at all right so let's take a look at some arpeggios the first obvi most obvious 
obvious choice would be just a straight up diminished. <laughs> because it's too too obvious or something. I happen to like it because I'm a giant Reinhardt freak, so my students uh, always tell me that it reminds them of Ingwie Malmsteen. No, 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 it's uh, Django. Though he played it. But if you want a more modern, uh, hip sounding arpeggio, you could do, for example, this. You could think of that as an D triad over E flat, right? Or E flat diminished major seven. So if you think arpeggiate that sound, you get something like... Uh, Major 7, I guess, would be the name of it. Let's listen to that. So it's like a B minor triad with an E flat. So a B minor triad with a uh, with a uh, major third. is not to talk about all the crazy stuff you could do with diminished. I, as I said, I have lessons on diminished patterns and crazy stuff you could do with the diminished scale that you can check out if you want. Something I want to mention is that I'm working on from this book right now, the Barry Harris Harmonic Method for Guitar. So many people recommended it to me after I posted a video on the Barry Harris stuff and I couldn't find an uh, actual phys physical copy of the book. I think it's out of print. And, uh, but I found a way to buy it online and print it, so I have it. I will make a, listen, a lesson on this later on. I just have to spend more time with the material. But one thing he talks about in that book, and he talks about in general, is uh, this really interesting thing. If you take a diminished chord, in this case, D flat, or sorry, E flat diminished, if you drop any of those notes, this is a drop two voicing of E flat diminished. If I drop any of the notes a half step, you get a dominant chord. So D7 or A flat 7 or B7. 
seven or F seven. So all those uh, dominant chords are kind of hidden in that diminished scale. Remember though that there's the, the A flat is the note that doesn't really work. So if you want to add extensions to this chord, usually we pick a note from a above that. So above this E flat diminished, there is an F diminished, which can contains all the extensions that we can use, right? So if I, for example, raise the C to a D natural, it becomes this D triad over E flat, or E flat diminished major seven, which sounds great. the F sharp to, to uh, A flat or G sharp, that's that note that we didn't find, the only find that in the diminished scale, it's, it's not in those other scales. That note is outside of the key, so it uh, sounds a little bit weird. But, I mean, if you find a way to make it work, do it. Of course, there's more stuff you could do. There's uh, triads within the diminished scale. So you could do triad coupling. You could play F triad, B triad. So there's all tons of stuff you can do. Uh, to work on that tune because what happens with those diminished chords is that people tend to kind of overlook those chords. The same thing with the ending there of, uh, or the last section of uh, All the Things You Are. So, of course, you can't. You don't have to play diminished there. You can treat it as parallel minor chords. But it's nice to have some. Uh, it's more sophisticated, I think, if you have looked at those chords. But because let's, if you can play tons of stuff on the D minor, D Dorian, G mixo, no problem. E, you have all the stuff you play. But here, ah, uh, you're not. Uh, you're limited in a way. Then you're not really. You know what I mean? Like that you want to be able to play anything you want, regardless of how difficult the chord is. So I think that was, uh, I think I've quoted this before, but I think Wayne Shorter said, I don't want the chord to decide what I'm playing. I want to decide what I'm playing or something along those lines. So I hope you get the idea. So that was that. And then you, of course, you, you do that with, all the other diminished chords in that tune, right? So, 
body and soul goes through kind of three keys, right? So the first section is in D flat, and then it transposes to D, D. sections as well so now you have hopefully more ideas on what to do with those diminished chords so i hope that made sense and uh, this stuff will be on my patreon page and i shall see you next